Okay, so today in lesson, Charlotte and I are doing the D major uh, three octave scale on viola with three stopped. She, we were doing three um, stopped like this. And it was a little tricky for her to always remember where she was in each group of three. And then after some discussion, we discovered that as a precursor to this, she had never played scales like this. Which is a very important precursor to changing the note every three. So I, I'm going to do that with her on viola, and maybe she could do that a little bit on violin. So I think she should do that with her bow divisions of two stops, three, and four, where you keep the pitch the same for each grouping until you become very comfortable and you always get the bow divisions it, they should be exactly in thirds or in halves or quarters. Then once you get that and you're always doing the groupings correctly, then you can move on to where you're changing the pitch for, I think you skipped that step by accident and it probably came from just an accidental when you changed up from Miss Jessica to Mr. Lionel. You know, sometimes that happens a little bit and I think that might improve your scale playing a little bit. So let's do that together right now with the three stop. And then you can use this video too. Ready? Here we go. And I think, like I said, I think it's just because probably when Miss Jessica had a different system and then when Mr. Lionel inherited you, I'm guessing he had thought you already did this step. So I'm going to give you another little, I'm going to give you a little step. Let me see your bow. Usually when I first doing, start, doing, start doing stop bows, I start with stop bows like this kind of bow division in like book one or book two. And so that by the time you've gotten to book four, you've done it for a long time. Sounds like you didn't really start doing it until like book four or something, which is not, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not a bad thing or anything, but I usually put tapes on. Now I'm going to do something because I know. This is not her regular violin bow, so this is only her viola bow, so we shouldn't worry too much about the tapes on. Okay, well, I'm also going to put them that they're like a little hidden, so you don't have to feel like... I mean, okay, one thing you could do is if you needed them on your violin bow, you could do scotch tape. So that, you know, like a little tiny piece of scotch tape, none of the kids are going to see in group or orchestra. So you don't have to feel, like, embarrassed about it. Or you can just use tape that you take off before you go to group class. If you feel, you know, like, you just have it just for the scale. Or the other thing is we can take a little tiny piece of tape and we can put it, like, on the inside of the bow. Just, like, I'm going to even cut it smaller than that. So that... The only person can see it is the person who the, you know, like it's facing, the bow is facing. So it's like you looking right at the bow. The audience looking from the other side is not going to be able to see this little tiny piece of tape. So you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I have tape on my bow. I'll and, I'll, feel it. <laughs> and I'll tell you this. Well, you're not going to really feel it. It's better to do it correctly with the tape yeah. than do it wrong without the tape. And my pedagogy teacher in college would put it on kids in college. Actually, she'd put a big, huge one on there, and you'd have to go to work with a big, a big huge tape on your bow. See, look. On this side, you can't see it. And you can only see it, the person playing the um, bow. It's, you can't see it on this side. So and when you'll be playing big, in group, nobody's going to see the bow. Okay? The how, the tape. Big is the, how big was the tape? 
Well, the, the high school person, I think, or the college person, it was yeah. pretty big. 